Okay, so what we're going to do now is the last part of the Photoshop extra exercise that we didn't get a chance to do in class. And uh, if we just look at the assignment right quick, it's this fade between two images. So in all of the sheets of the exercise, sheet one and sheet two, we're combining images by putting them on top of each other. In sheet three, we're doing something a little different. We're uh, combining these images in a different way. We're going to fade one out and reveal the other underneath. So to try and be a little bit creative in what images you choose. Um, don't, don't bore everyone in the class with Google Maps and Google Earth if you can help it, although Google Earth is probably going to be one of your images. But you know, try and think outside the box a little on that one. So I, f I found two images that I liked. And I'm going to combine this Google Earth aerial with an old historical uh, downtown. Uh, we got like an old, you know, uh, block map, an old subdivision map. I'm going to combine, combine that with the aerial. So the first thing I'm going to do is from one uh, file, I'm going to copy and paste it into the other file. So I'm going to go select all from the pull downs, edit, copy. I'm going to go to my what's going to be my main file and go edit paste. See, it brings it in as another layer. Remember, one file, one layer. I'm going to go ahead and rename these just so I don't go crazy. I'm just going to call this one Old Chicago and this one just New Chicago Ariel. Okay, so with this layer current, I can see I have a couple of problems. One, it doesn't line up, but it would be a miracle if it did. Now I'm, I'm visually just looking at ways to line it up. The first thing I see is the river, okay? I've got this bend in the river where the main stem uh, bifurcates into the north branch and south branch at Wolf's Point. So I'm going to use that as my sort of point of... Uh, my base point and I know I can see this hitch up here and of course it's on a grid system so I know that grid has to be accurate I'm gonna zoom out a little bit with my old Chicago the top layer current I'm gonna go edit uh, transform sorry edit free transform and just get that bounding box so I can just visually holding down shift it's gonna scale up this other image till I think it's pretty close and um, you know, I think I'm getting there now, maybe. So one one way that it's easier to align these two images is to add a little uh, a little transparency to that top image. So I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit, down to like 80% or so, and now I start to see really how well it's lining up. Maybe I'll kick that down a little further. And uh, you know what? I actually got it pretty close. Not too bad the first time. Um, so I'm just going to get it in about what I think is the good location and hit enter to anchor that. So now I have my two images aligned. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this opacity back up to a hundred percent. And okay. So now that I have the two images, uh, aligned and the same size, I'm going to add a layer mask to the top image and that's what's going to give us our gradient. There's two ways to do it. You can go to layer layer mask and reveal all uh, but there's also a little shortcut thing that's this like square with a hole in it right next to the FX and that's add layer mask and so I'm just going to use that I'm just going to click that once you can see my layer has changed it's showing me the layer mask now this is just sort of go with this this is kind of um, some of the magic of Photoshop and how this is going to work is I'm going to define a gradient that's going to give me that fade. The gradient tool is on the same flyout as the paint bucket tool. So with that gradient tool selected, I'm just going to pick and drag and see what happens. It fades out that top image. And if you click and drag a very short amount of time, it gives you a very crisp image. If you click and drag a very long amount of time, it makes the fade very gradual. If you hold down shift, you can constrain it so it's perfectly horizontal. So I'm going to do a nice gradual fade here between these two images till I have something that I like. 
So, you know, what's the message here? It's sort of revealing how maybe I'm doing a piece on the Chicago River and how the history of the river was so important. And um, I like the way this image works towards uh, to combine the contemporary aerial and the downtown with this old historic image. Who knows why I might need this. Uh, we're just doing it for the exercise. And so when I have what I like, maybe I'll um, crop using the crop tool uh, up here on the, my toolbar. You know, maybe I'll get a nice image that I think is working for me. Um, you know, again, I'm not really doing a project like this, but if I were, and there it is. And now I have a final image that sort of interestingly blends these two maps together. And, uh, and they're aligned, and it gives you a nice sort of effect when you want to combine two images in a different way.